Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I did this landscape using only two colors. Now I chose to use a blue and an orange. I really love how they mix together and how I can get different kinds of grays and I really wanted to play up the warmth and the shadows in this. So if you want to see how I did this then let's get right into the video. So the two colors I chose for this painting were transparent orange and indigo from Windsor & Newton. Now I really like the brightness that I can get with transparent orange instead of burnt sienna. Now normally I would pick my phthalo blue or my French ultramarine to mix with my orange and I get grays with those as well but in the reference photo the sky was a little bit more moody and a little bit darker so that's why I chose my indigo and then because indigo is a darker color I'll also be able to mix darker grays a little bit easier. Now that's not to say that you can't use a phthalo or an ultramarine to do that, but because the indigo is already so dark on its own, it will help to make those darks a little bit easier without having to mix so much paint together. Now I'm using the wet on wet technique to do the sky here, and I just wet the whole paper. I put the orange part in first and I feather it up into the blue and then I put the blue in and feather that down and as I'm feathering the paint down I rinse my brush so that I'm not introducing more of that blue paint in. And in the orange area in the sky I am trying to leave a small little circle area free of paint so I've painted around it and then I've even come in with a Kleenex just to kind of dot that area out so that we have our sun kind of shining through. Now the tree is going to cover up most of it but I wanted an area where I knew the light was coming from. Now in front of the area where I've chosen my sun to go, I'm taking a very light watery version of that orange and I'm putting that in so that the highlight area from that sun is gonna show up. And then once we come over top with some of our blues, it'll mix and create some gray shadows. And I'm doing the same thing with the blue and I'm still using indigo here, but it's very watered down at this point. And I'm just getting some of those shadows in that I see more towards the edges of the painting. And once I get those first layers in, I'll come with a little bit thicker paint and I'm almost dry brushing this on because I wanna create some texture. Um, I can see a little bit of the snow texture on the ground in the reference photo and I want to have some of that white showing through. So doing some dry brushing, you'll get little areas of white showing through your brush strokes and this worked out really great for this picture. Now I'm mixing up a light gray between the orange and the blue and I want to keep this a little bit more warm so I add a little bit more orange to this and this is going to be our distant hills in the background. And you can see that warmth still showing through so it shows that the sun is really starting to just come up. Then I go ahead and mix up a darker version of using the orange and the blue and I just use a little bit more paint and a little bit less water. And this is what I'm going to use to start putting those fence posts in. So now you can see this is a lot more concentrated versus our hills in the background which are a lot more translucent and light and that's going to help push those back even further. And then our posts and our tree are going to stand out into the foreground here. Now I'm trying to make the posts different sizes, different angles. I don't want them to all look stick thin and straight because that's going to not look realistic. Now I'm using that same mixture, maybe even a little bit thicker and a little bit more on the blue side here and I'm putting in the thicker trunks of the tree. And one thing that you want to watch here is you want to make sure that your main trunk is the thickest and then the first trunk that is coming off, I guess the first part of the branches that are coming off from the main trunk, those are gonna be your second thickest areas. And then everything else that comes off from that is gonna get a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner until you have these little tiny scraggly stick things coming out at the very end. And you don't want every little stick or every little branch to be coming out from the same spot you want some to be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and this is kind of really fun and it helps you practice getting your thick and thin lines with your brushes. And don't worry about the way your tree looks like. You could do more branches or less branches. It doesn't have to look exactly like the reference photo. Just have some fun and just practice putting in some of those little squiggly lines. And when I say squiggly lines, I mean squiggly lines because tree branches aren't straight. They're not you know, a line. It's more of like a curvy line as it goes out and some of them will curve down, some of them will curve up. 
So make sure you put a little bit of variety into it. And you can see as I get to the very edges of those branches, some of those sticks are so thin you can barely see them. Some of them don't even touch the branches and that's totally fine. Then I'm just making a little bit of a shadow underneath the tree here and I'm using a little bit more of a watery version of that same color. I want to keep all of my other shadows now a little bit more on the blue side and just making some shadows in between the posts. And some of these shadow areas I'm going to make a little bit darker when it's underneath the posts and then between the posts I make it a little bit lighter. Now I'm starting to come in and work on some of these cast shadows that are being created from the sun and we want to be mindful of the angle of the sun compared to our shadow. So you can see here I'm almost drawing a line from the sun to all of the posts so each post is going to have a slightly different angled shadow just depending on where it's placed in your painting. Then I just go in and I create a couple little strands to indicate maybe some grass or something growing around the tree or growing around the posts. You can find the real-time version of this painting and all of my other tutorials over on my Patreon. I do provide my line art and any reference photos that I've used to create the painting. If you enjoyed this video then be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and check out this other watercolor tutorial right here. Thank you so much for watching and as always I'll see you in the next video.